Evil Punishments in Human History Throughout human history, the annals of justice are stained with accounts of unspeakable cruelty, where the methods of punishment descended into realms of darkness and malevolence. In the pursuit of control, power, or perceived righteousness, societies have devised punishments that transcend the boundaries of morality. Delving into the annals of history unveils a chilling tapestry of suffering inflicted upon individuals and communities, a testament to the darkest facets of human behavior in the name of justice and order. Number 7. The Rat Torture Historically, the cruel practice known as rat torture was a barbaric method of punishment. In this gruesome ordeal, a cage or bucket would be placed on the victim's abdomen and rats, left with no alternative, were introduced into the confinement. Driven by the escalating heat within the enclosure, the rodents would frantically scratch and burrow into the victim's belly in a desperate attempt to escape. As the creatures dubbed their claws through the flesh and into the entrails, the excruciating pain inflicted both psychological and physical torment. This macabre technique, depicted in HBO's Game of Thrones series, stands as one of history's most horrifying methods of punishment. For those interested in exploring vivid portrayals of such historical punishments, visual content such as documentaries may offer a chilling glimpse into the dark chapters of the past. Number 6. Crushed by Elephant A historical method of execution known as Crushed by Elephant was a brutal and gruesome form of capital punishment practiced in various cultures. This method involved the condemned person being placed on the ground while an elephant, often trained for such executions, was used to crush them to death. The sheer size and weight of the elephant made this form of execution particularly horrifying. Typically, the condemned individual would be positioned on the ground, and the executioner would command the elephant to step on or trample the person. The massive weight of the elephant inflicted severe trauma and resulted in a grisly demise. This method of execution was used as a means to instill fear and serve as a deterrent against committing serious crimes or acts of rebellion. The cruelty and spectacle associated with being crushed by an elephant have made it a harrowing and unforgettable form of punishment throughout history. While such methods of execution are no longer practiced in modern times, they serve as dark reminders of the extreme measures societies have employed in the pursuit of justice and control. Number 5. Impalement Impalement is a historical method of execution that involves the act of piercing the body with a sharp object, typically a stake or a pole. This gruesome form of punishment has been used in various cultures throughout history, serving as a means of execution, torture, or public display of power. The process of impalement varied, but it often involved forcing a sharpened object through the body, either from the lower torso or through the rectum, and then allowing the victim to slide down the length of the pole. The severity of the impalement and the choice of method depended on the intentions of the executioner, whether it was a slow and agonizing death or a quicker, more immediate demise. Different civilizations have historically used impalement for a variety of purposes including punishing criminals, repressing dissent, or sending a harsh message to enemies. The method was notably associated with Vlad the Impeller, a 15th century ruler in Wallachia, who earned his moniker due to his frequent use of impalement as a form of punishment. While impalement is no longer a common method of execution in contemporary times, its historical significance underscores the extreme and brutal measures that were once employed in the name of justice, control, or intimidation. Number 4. Heel hauling Heel hauling was a brutal maritime punishment historically used as a disciplinary measure on sailing ships. This severe practice involved dragging an individual underneath the ship's hull from one side to the other. The person subjected to keel hauling would be tied to a rope or line that was looped under the ship and then thrown overboard. As the ship moved forward, the individual would be dragged beneath the vessel's keel, the longitudinal structure along its bottom. The process of keel hauling exposed the person to the harsh underwater surfaces of the ship, including barnacles and other marine growth. This often resulted in severe lacerations, contusions, and abrasions. In some cases, drowning could occur due to prolonged immersion in the water. The severity of injuries inflicted during keel hauling made it a feared and effective means of enforcing discipline among sailors. Keel hauling was typically reserved for serious offenses, such as insubordination, mutiny, or theft. The public nature of the punishment, often conducted in front of the entire crew, served as a deterrent to discourage other sailors from engaging in misconduct. As naval practices modernized and became more humane, keel hauling fell out of use. Its abandonment is attributed to the recognition of its extreme cruelty and the evolving understanding of human rights and dignity. While keel hauling is no longer practiced, its historical existence serves as a stark reminder of the harsh discipline endured by sailors in the past. Number 3. The Rack The rack is a notorious historical instrument of torture and punishment that was employed in various cultures over the centuries. It consists of a rectangular frame with a roller at each end and a hand crank mechanism. The victim would be placed on the rack, with their ankles and wrists secured to the rollers. 
As the torturer turned the crank, the victim's body would be stretched, causing excruciating pain and in some cases, dislocation or even death. The stretching mechanism of the rack was designed to inflict both physical and psychological torment. The gradual increase in tension could lead to the dislocation of joints, tearing of muscles, and severe pain throughout the victim's body. In addition to the physical suffering, the psychological impact of knowing that the torture could be prolonged and intensified added to the overall horror of the experience. The rack was often used as a method of extracting confessions or information from prisoners, as the unbearable pain would sometimes lead individuals to admit to crimes or reveal secrets. It was also employed as a public spectacle, serving as a deterrent to potential wrongdoers. While the rack is associated with medieval times, variations of stretching torture have been used in different cultures and eras. As societal attitudes towards cruelty and torture evolve, the use of the rack diminished, and it is now considered a symbol of the brutality of certain historical periods. Number 2. The Oubliette Dungeon The Oubliette Dungeon, derived from the French word oublier, meaning to forget, was a dark and foreboding form of underground confinement used in medieval castles and dungeons. Unlike conventional prison cells, the Oubliette was a particularly sinister design characterized by its lack of light, ventilation, and sometimes even space. Typically accessed through a trapdoor in the ceiling, the Oubliette was a vertical shaft or pit beneath the castle floor. Prisoners would be thrown or lowered into this subterranean chamber, often with no means of escape or rescue. The depths of the Oubliette were shrouded in darkness, and its dimensions were deliberately cramped, making it impossible for the incarcerated to stand or lie comfortably. The Oubliette served as a place of both punishment and neglect. Prisoners were left to languish in isolation, with the knowledge that they might never be retrieved. In some cases, the pit had spikes at the bottom, adding an extra layer of horror. The intent was to erase these individuals from memory, as their very existence was seemingly forgotten in the depths of the dungeon. While the Oubliette was undoubtedly a cruel and inhumane form of imprisonment, its historical use has left a lasting mark on popular imagination, often appearing in literature, films, and other media as a symbol of the darkest aspects of medieval dungeons and the arbitrary cruelty of the past. Number 1. Gibbeting Human Cages Gibbeting, specifically the use of human cages, was a macabre form of punishment and public display in various historical societies. Gibbets were iron cages or structures in which the corpses of executed criminals were placed, often in a public space, as a gruesome deterrent to potential wrongdoers. In the practice of gibbeting, the body of the deceased offender would be enclosed in a metal cage, hung from a framework or gallows in a prominent location. This exhibit's goal was to highlight the negative effects of criminal behavior, while also highlighting the severity of the penalties imposed by the law. Passersby would witness the decomposing remains of the individual, serving as a stark reminder of the consequences of transgressing societal norms. Gibbeting was often reserved for individuals who had committed particularly heinous crimes, such as murder, treason, or acts considered morally repugnant. The display was intended not only to punish the offender posthumously, but also to instill fear in the minds of onlookers, discouraging them from engaging in criminal behavior. While the use of gibbeting has largely faded from modern legal systems, historical accounts and remnants of such structures exist, offering a chilling glimpse into the harsh and brutal nature of justice in the past. The practice serves as a testament to the evolution of societal attitudes towards punishment and the human rights considerations that shape contemporary legal systems. Conclusion Throughout history, humanity has witnessed the grotesque manifestations of evil punishments, where justice has become synonymous with brutality. From medieval dungeons to public displays of suffering, the annals of time reveal a dark tapestry of cruelty. However, as societies evolved, so did our understanding of justice. In the modern era, a global consensus emphasizes humane and ethical treatment, rejecting the malevolent practices of the past. While the shadows of history persist, contemporary commitments to compassion and fairness signal progress in our collective journey towards a more enlightened concept of justice. Would you like it? Hit the like button and subscribe to our channels for more interesting and informative videos.